Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Just Germany. I guess you can see from what you see at the back of me here what we're going to be talking about today. It's going to be about our, my Tough Talk 40mm suspension upgrade. Um, so far I've had it installed for about uh, a year now so I can give you a true reflection of my experience with it thus far. I did a lot of tests for you guys and we're going to have a look at the different tests on video that I did for you. But I think we first need to start off with why I installed the Tough Dog suspension. Um, as most of you know, the Jimny has got a solid front axle. A lot of people are complaining about how the Jimny drives on the road. And uh, I think this is mainly because of the, the solid front axle. Solid front axle vehicles um, perform a, a, or, or ride a bit harsher than independent uh, vehicles do. The solid front axle gives you a much more capable vehicle off-road, but it takes a bit away on your, your on-road handling. That's why I said on the normal suspension, it's a solid front axle. Suzuki didn't spend a lot of money on the, the coils and the shocks they put in there. And that's why you look at an aftermarket suspension. The sanded suspension. Um, with the solid front axle, the ride is a bit less comfortable on-road but off-road it gives you a lot of capability. So my main reasons why I did the, the aftermarket suspension upgrade was um, if I'm driving over the normal humps in the road that you get, um, the vehicle bottomed out on that. Um, the suspension was very, very soft and you had a lot of body roll while you, you're driving on-road and off-road. Um, off-road the suspension was quite comfortable, but like I said, on certain obstacles, the suspension bottomed out and in certain situations it was way too soft and the body roll was too much. So when you look at a side slope and you have that extra body roll from the, the standard suspension that puts you in a very uncomfortable situation. So why did I choose Tough Dog? Um, at the moment I was looking around for, uh, between a lot of different suspensions. Um, there's the, the, the sole suspension um, that has Safari HTP shocks included and custom coils. Um, the Old Man Emo suspension was available and then of course the Tough Dog. Um, my main reason for the Tough Dog was it was at a really good price point. I paid 20,000 Rand for my whole suspension. That included uh, the shocks, the coils, um, ABS relocation pipes, brake relocation pipes, they even did a relocation of the, the cross member as well. So if you want to take your um, lift a bit higher at the later stage, the cross member is already installed, the brake lines have already been extended and the ABS has already been extended as well. So why did I choose the Tough Dog suspension over all these other suspensions? Tough Dog had a really good offer uh, going in South Africa at that stage. It was 20,000 Rand for the full suspension that included the coils, the shocks, um, ABS, relocation pipes, extended brake lines. And um, one thing that a lot of guys forget on the GLX model, you actually have projection lights and you need a small little uh, plate that connects between the frame of the car and the body and that actually tells the lights um, how high or how low to shine so that you don't blind other people while you load it up in your car. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Remember the gel X has those projector lights and you need that little plate connected between the body and the chassis so that you, you don't blind other people while your car is, is at load. Main reasons why I didn't go for the OME was because um, the OME was, well, was about 10,000 Rand more expensive than the, the Tough Dog suspension and the OME only came with the shocks and uh, the coils. So with Tough Dog I got the full suspension kit and OME just had the, the coils and the shocks available and I had to spend another 10 grand on top of that to get the the, the same accessories that I had with with the Tough Dog uh, suspension. The Tough Dog suspension again nice full kit 
LME cost me a lot more money than the tough talk would have. The dissolved suspension um, consists out of the, the normal coils that are manufactured according to your writing in South Africa and then you get the Safari HTP shocks with them. Um, my main concern with this solution was that the, the shocks weren't created for the Jimny. Um, they actually utilize it on, on other cars as well and that's why the shock is much thicker than the Old Man Emo or the Wild Dog shocks that you get for the Jimny because it actually serves on the Isuzu double cab buckies as well as the shock there. So if you look at the, the overall choice between OME, the Soul and Wild Dog, Wild Dog was actually the second cheapest option I had available in South Africa. And I, I got a full kit for that. A nice thing that I see the Soul is doing now as well as they're making caster correction bushes available. Um, my only concern is still, what warranty do you guys get on the dissolved suspension? Because on the Wild Dog suspension, I get three years well, and a 100,000 kilometer warranty on it. I think OME's uh, warranty is about the same as the, the Tough Dog suspension warranty. Do you get a warranty on the dissolved suspensions? Another thing we need to look at is um, do you get different rated coils on the dissolved suspension? Because I know on the OME and the Tough Dog suspension you get three choices. So just the normal load, medium load and heavy load uh, coils that you get. Um, with mine I got the, the normal load. I, I'm not expecting to, to overload it with rooftop tents, aftermarket bumpers, um, Huge, huge packing systems and that. So I'm trying to get away with the normal load suspension on the tough top. Um, so far it's firm enough for me and you know even with, with panky, packing for a, a weekend away um, you know the back of the car doesn't even hunch down if I load it up. I, I still need to see how much I need to load into it before it, it starts just starts hunching down um, under load. Okay, so let's talk about my Tough Dog suspension. Um, I went for the 40mm kit with the normal load coil springs. Uh, the guys did a quick and easy installation. I think the installation took them about two hours to get that done. The most tricky part, I think, of the installation is the cross member that needs to be installed. You actually take the standard Jimny one out and they, they put one that, that fits snugly behind the the, the back of your, your diff. So why did I go for the 40 millimeter lift? Um, 40 millimeters seemed like a, a, a good start for me um, and you know with everything that tough, tough Dog gives you in the kit the only thing you're going to need to change out when you want to lift it a bit higher is maybe the coil springs. You know if you want to improve on your load capability you just swap out the coil springs. Uh, another option is uh, if you need more clearance for bigger tires, that type of stuff, you can just put a normal uh, spicer on top of the, the coils. Your shocks will be long enough, your brake lines will be long enough. Everything is just going to work seamlessly with that. So why spend the money on a 60mm or 80mm lift if you're not going to need it? Um, I think this was a nice choice for me because it's still flexible enough that I can change it later on if I'm not happy with something. Okay, so the type of shocks you get uh, with this Tough Dog suspension is a foam sole shock. Um, this is a shock that uh, Tough Dog is testing out on the Jimny now with this new kit on the Jimnys. So, with the foam sole, you, you actually get better heat dissipation. What happens when you, you're driving with your car, especially on bad corrugated roads, gravel roads, that type of stuff, that shock, shock is moving up and down constantly and that generates a lot of heat. So on most of the, the, the other shocks that you get are either uh, gas riders or uh, oil filled shocks. This is a, a hybrid type of shock where you have a bit of gas and oil and of course the foam salt technology included in it. 
Um, it's also an adjustable shock, so you can adjust the um, different type of terrain shoe you want to travel on. You can set it for firmer, harder, softer, all that type of stuff. So while you're driving on road, you can make it much firmer, and when you're going off road, you can actually set that shock, and it's much softer, and it will provide a com more comfortable ride, and it will also flex a bit more. With OME, I'm not certain what type of shocks I currently have. Um, I know the HTP shocks are normal oil shocks with, with a bit of gas in them. So, guys, warranty for me on this one is a big one. Um, that three years, 100,000 kilometers, anything goes wrong, they swap out this, that component that has failed. Um, which is a big positive in my book. The type of driving I'm doing, um, a lot of gravel roads, a lot of off-roading and a lot of on-road with a lot of speed bumps. So I did a few tests for you guys on this system that I have and what I first did was I wanted to show you how it performs on-road. So what I did was I drove down one of the, the streets close to my home and I did a bit of swerving left to right at about 45 kilometers per hour and you can see um, the improvement on body roll of that as well. After that, I did a hard stop and to show you that the nose doesn't dip that much as it used to with the standard suspension and you can also see at the back of the car how much it lifts and, uh, and sags down after a hard stop. The next test I did was um, I actually took one of the speed bumps in that street at speed again at 45 kilometers per hour and you can see how well the suspension handles that. Um, this is, I, I, I don't say drive 45 kilometers over every speed bump you get, but think about it while you're doing uh, travel on gravel roads. There's a lot of bumps and stuff in those gravel roads normally, and you're normally traveling at speeds of 60 or above. Um, sometimes it's just over a hill and you don't know what's waiting for you on the other side. Now you know that this suspension can handle it. Um, even at 45 kilometers per hour over that speed bump, my suspension didn't bottom out. Um, I would love to see that comparison done with uh, Jimny with normal suspension and Jimny's with other suspensions as well. So, you know, if you guys feel up to it, maybe some other time we can do a test like that and, and compare these suspensions available in South Africa and see how they perform on-road, off-road, gravel road, that type of stuff. Um, the other test I did for you guys was while we were at Mahatle one weekend, um, we were a lot of different cars and we, we filmed how each car handled quite a deep rut in the road and um, we tried to let everybody drive the same line and what you're going to see is you're going to see a Jeep Rubicon with 35 inch tires aftermarket suspension, all the bells and whistles. After that you're going to see a uh, normal Isuzu uh, 250 doing the same obstacle as well as two Ford Rangers. And last but not least you're going to see how the Jimny performed over that. What you will realize on this video is that there's a lot more flex at the back of the vehicle than at the front. What limits your vehicle's flex in the front is that sway bar. Um, I'd still like to do a test sometime for you guys as well where we actually take the sway bar off and we show you how much more flex you get by removing that sway bar. Always remember if you do that sway bar only off during off-roading as soon as you're planning to go onto a tow road make sure your sway bar is connected again. The other test I did for you guys was um, I took it over a bit of gravel road so you can actually see how hard that shock works while you're driving around even just driving in the city, I'll show you a sort of short clip of me just driving around the, the, the roads in our residential area here and all the speed bumps you get and you're going to see how hard that shock actually works and why spending money on a good system, it's worth its weight in, its weight in gold. So gravel road, on road, off road. So far, my experience with this suspension for one year now is um, it's probably my favorite upgrade on, I did on the Jimny thus far. Um, I must say it's money well spent. 
its behavior on the road much better. Um, at highway speeds on the highway, it's much more solid on the road. Um, I like to call it, you, you give it a bit of confidence. It's got confidence on the road now, where the standard suspension didn't have that. I'd say the standard suspension off-road wasn't bad. Um, it flexed quite good. Um, it was comfortable. But again, you, you get those obstacles where you need to do everything a bit faster. And as soon as you go over a bump too fast, it bottoms out. Um, I hate I hate it when a car bottoms out because that just tells you that its suspension setup is not correct for what you are doing with it. Um, on gravel roads, the tough dog suspension is amazing. Um, I can travel confidently at 80 kilometers per hour on a decent gravel road. On a worse gravel road, you can do about 60 kilometers per hour. On the standard suspension, I could do about 50, almost 60 but then you started getting body roll or you got a bump in the road and it bottomed out. Because remember, when you, you're doing traveling on, on gravel roads, most of the time I'm fully packed when I'm doing that. Um, with this stuff, dog suspension, um, if we load up for a weekend, the back doesn't even droop. Um, and it's basically full to the, to the roof of the, the, the gym at the back. Um, Adding the roof rack extra on, I don't think will cause a, a major issue for me. Like I said, I still need to load enough stuff in that Germany to make the, the backside droop with the tough dog suspension. Um, how the car handles when it's loaded, it actually just gets more comfortable. Um, the ride is, is firm, but not hard on the open road while you, you're not loaded. If you load it, the ride gets much smoother um, and it, it's a lot more comfortable. Um, like I said, you can go over those bumps even when you're fully loaded, it's probably still not going to bottom out. Um, it makes sense to, to go to a qualified installer that knows the suspension system they're installing. Um, I think a lot of guys say your, your, your warranty may be influenced if they didn't install the suspension. So I'm always better safe than sorry when we're spending this amount of money. So I go to a specialist that, can, that actually knows the suspension I'm um, purchasing and they will do the installation for me. Uh, another nice thing you get out of this deal is that you can actually go for checkups before you do any long trips or serious 4x4 trips. You just pull your car in, these guys are more than happy to go through your suspension, make sure those bolts are tight on your, your, your uh, shocks, um, make sure that the, the leaf springs are seated correctly, they go through the whole suspension, make sure everything is tight and ready for you to go. Again, with this suspension as well, um, I think this is a very important accessory you're adding to your car. Um, adding the wrong type of suspension to your, to your car for the wrong reason is going to cost you a lot of money in knock-on effect. Um, like I said, this 40mm is more than enough to fit 235 tires without it catching. Like I said in my previous videos, you need to know what you want to do with your car, um, what uses, use cases you want to use it for. Um, the suspension is a big upgrade to do and if you put in the wrong suspension you're going to have a bad experience. If you want to put in a cheap suspension yourself, you have to live with it. Um, on the road things can go bad quite quickly you know when you're traveling at 100 kilometers per hour and you get a side wind and your car starts swerving all over the road that's not the situation you want to be in that's why I say always spend a bit more money on stuff that is designed for your car let it be installed by professionals that know what they're doing you're getting a warranty on it you're getting the after sales service on it as well so sit down decide what you want to do with your car and kit it accordingly other tips I can give you on suspension is, does it have a warranty? What is the warranty period? Um, price. Price is important for everyone. What are you willing to spend on this car to improve it from standard? What type of after sale service do you get from the guys that you buy the suspension from? Or do, do you just order it in the mail and take it to somebody to, that installs it for you? Although they have never installed a suspension like this before. 
Um, do regular checkups on your suspension. You know, with all the corrugated roads, extreme trails you're driving off-road, uh, keep an eye on the, the, the bolts on your shocks, that type of stuff. If you have a warranty and you have that after sale service, take it into the guys that know what they're doing. Let them go through the suspension and let them check it out. On my TJM suspension, I had shocks that failed. I had bolts that broke off my shocks. I had oil coming out of my one shock. I had uh, coil springs that started sagging after a while. And all that stuff was covered by, covered by my warranty that I had on the TJM suspension. So yes, you're paying a bit now, more now to get a decent suspension installed. But later on, it's going to keep on paying for you. And I, I think the performance you're getting out of your car with this type of suspension is amazing. Um, you know, Suzuki can't afford to put a suspension um, as good as a Tough Dog or Old Man Emu into the, into the Germany as stock because they don't know if this person is going to be using it constantly off-road. They don't know how extreme the trails are going to be. So they are fitting a suspension that's going to fit their price mark in the market. And they're trying to bring a product to you that's still affordable, but you can fit extras as you require them. Thanks again for spending some time with us uh, watching this video. Um, like I said again, this is my opinion on this. I think the, the Tough Dog suspension is a great one to, to choose. Old Man Emo, not bad at all. Safari HTP and the Dassault suspension we've got available. Um, guys, I'd like to get feedback from the owners on that. If you can maybe comment. Um, if you can maybe tell me a bit more about that suspension. There's lot, not a lot of information online on it. So I'd like to know if you guys get a warranty choices between different uh, coil loads. And um, also, you know, the, the type of after sale service you, you get from these guys. Um, I know there's a few guys that have problems with their uh, fitment of the, 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 the Tough Dog suspension that the shocks keep on catching. In, in my opinion, I don't have any problems with that. You'll see it in the footage as well. Um, and again, thank you for watching Just Jimny. Um, I hope I made your lives a bit easier or I maybe entertained you. Um, if you do like the videos, please subscribe, comment. We, we love comments. We love replying on them. I love hearing from guys with different opinions as well. Um, we've got other platforms available but the YouTube channel. Uh, it's on Facebook, Instagram, um, the website as well. So go and have a look there. If you want to chat with us, we're always ready to, to reply to your comments. Happy to do that. And uh, thanks a lot for watching again. Just Jimmy on.